You won't believe how inexpensive this is selling for. This is selling for 29 cents a watt hour. Absolutely insane. This is the Sonic 1200 from Egritech. The question is, is it actually good for that price? Or have they cut corners? Let's find out. Let's unbox this. I did notice here we have uh, some pretty substantial shipping damage. So let's see how the unit fared. All right, we got a 12 volt cigarette style plug to XT60. And we got an AC charging cord. Notice there's no charging brick. We've got a Bible of documentation here. <laughs> this is quite the book. Looks like that just has a bazillion languages. So that's why it's so thick. In reality, there's only 22 pages. And here's the unit. The shipping damage made it to the unit. Doesn't look like it. It survived. Kind of a cool display with it uh, circular like that. So we've got estimated time remaining. Obviously, percentage state of charge. Uh, this says out watts. I assume it will probably switch between in and out, depending on what's happening. I don't know if you noticed, uh, but uh, there's these little icons down here. So I have all of the units turned on, the inverter, the 12 volt DC outlet uh, right here, and then the USB outlets. And uh, if I turn off, say this DC, notice that that icon went away. Let's turn off the USBs. The USB icons went away. And then if we turn off the AC inverter, uh, well, everything turned off, but uh, Anyway, so long as one thing's on, both those will be on and uh, it will tell you what is on. 12 volt cigarette style plug. That's the only 12 volt outlet. We've got four USB outlets here. Two type A rated for 24 watts and two power delivery 100 watt USB-C ports. Let's see what this light does. Low, high, SOS, and strobe. So. That's nice. Looks like we've got a nice uh, wireless charging pad up here. However, notice that we are not charging at the moment. And uh, that's because you need to turn the DC power on. Not the USB power, the DC power. So here we go. We'll turn that on. And there we go. We've started uh, wireless charging. I really like how huge this handle is, but yet it folds out of the way and uh, leaves you a very nice flat surface. I've got two AC outlets on this side and uh, the inverter on off switch right there. This little uh, vent opens up and reveals our inputs. This just says solar input. I would like to see some kind of annotation as far as what the specs are for how much voltage you can push into this because you can easily blow up the MPPT solar charge controller if you hook up stuff that has an open circuit voltage that's too high. It is noted here, our PV input is 10 to 24 volts, 12 amps max, the limit of 200 watts. It's not great, uh, at least it's 200 watts, but uh, I would have liked to see more. Its rated capacity is 999 watt hours. AC input is rated for a thousand watts max. The AC output from the inverter is rated at 1200 watts. The 12 volt uh, carport is rated for a 10, 10 amps max. It is a 15 watt wireless charger. In the frequently asked questions section here, it says this uses just a standard lithium ion battery. And at the specs up here, it does not say anything about battery chemistry. So I'm going to have to assume that this does not have lithium iron phosphate battery chemistry, which is another bummer. It will start regulating itself and restricting itself based on the on the battery charge level. Been charging for a minute and uh, the fans have turned on. Let me let you hear how they sound. It's a very soft hum. It's audible, but it's not outrageous or bothersome. Can, and if so, how long can this Egritech run a full-size kitchen refrigerator for? This is my main fridge that uh, I use on a daily occasion in my kitchen. So it gets opened and closed and uh, used uh, frequently. So, a real-world test. 
Let's see if it is able to run it, uh, and then if so, how long it will power it for. Turning it on, three, two, one. I also completely forgot to show you the time when I started this. I started it at exactly 2 p.m. We've got a big issue here with this uh, power station when it comes to running a fridge. When this senses no output from the AC outlet that's five watts or less for over an hour, it automatically shuts down the inverter. Well, that's a problem because your fridge shuts off and can be off for longer than an hour. It still needs to be on, but as you can see, the light is off and uh, there's no AC output anymore. So that's a big issue with this. So can this run the fridge? It can run it, but you better not uh, need it for more than one cycle. So I'm gonna say no, it cannot run a fridge just uh, for that reason. Can the Egrotech Sonic 1200 power an electric hot plate? So it looks like it's holding at about 1500 watts and hasn't tripped. There's 1200. This is interesting. I'm suspicious that uh, this is doing something funny with the voltage. Let's test that quick. I've got the power station turned on its side so we can kind of see the voltage here. 121.5, 0 0.7, 0 0.4. So fluctuating there right at 120 where we'd expect. So now let's turn on this uh, heavy load. See what happens to the voltage. Ah, holding right at 120. Let's see what the wattage is. 1400. 1300. 1200. Oh, there we go. Now the voltage has dropped down to 108. Uh, be careful. Uh, with uh, what you put on this power station because it will automatically drop its voltage and that could potentially damage sensitive electronics. It really doesn't matter with uh, resistive loads, loads like this. For more sensitive electronics, uh, lower voltage could be a problem. So keep that in mind and there's no way to turn that off uh, or adjust it to uh, like some of the other power stations that have features like that. Can the Agritech Sonic 1200 power a full-size household vacuum cleaner? Find out. 1200. Seems to be working fine. Can the Agritech Sonic 1200 run a batch of wash? This is a gas-powered dryer. Uh, it runs off 120 volts. You can see both machines are plugged into here, and you can see that the 240 volt outlet right there is empty. It takes an incredible amount of surge to get this drum started. Let's start with the dryer and see what happens. Three, two, one. Nope, not even close. You can see we've got a E35 error and it says overload. Good to see though that uh, it protected itself. Let's see how we uh, reset this. Let's try turning the inverter on. So yeah, you just have to uh, push the inverter button to reset it. Now we've got uh, this batch of wash, full load, towels, nice and heavy. We've got a 99% state of charge. So let's uh, see how this is able to go. All right, we're currently on the spin cycle and uh, you can see that uh, it's pulling just over hundred watts. So not very much at all. So this Sonic uh, 1200 can easily power a clothes washer. All right, wash is all done. And uh, you can see we've depleted down to 89%. So batch of wash only used 10% of this uh, power station's capacity. Okay, this Egrotech Sonic 1200 power of the cord. A 120 volt mini split heat pump. This is a 9,000 BTU unit. We're gonna be running it in cooling today. Come over here to the power station and watch the uh, wattage ramp up. Looks like uh, 600 is where it's gonna stop uh, for today. It can get up to about uh, 900. That's about the highest I've seen this unit to uh, get to. It will ramp all the way down to like 200 and just kind of coast. 6.19 p.m. 
We'll be back in an hour and uh, we'll see how this is doing at that point. Uh, you can see it's already dropped down to the high 200, mid 200 range. These units are so efficient. All right, we'll be back in an hour or 81% capacity. 719, an hour later, the sun has set and it's a pretty mild night tonight. The uh, outdoor unit uh, has shut off, so it's satisfied inside. We're down to 66%. So that is really good. And I think a lot of that is uh, due to how mild it is tonight. I could uh, easily see it depleting about double that uh, on a hot summer night. The uh, Egrotech Sonic uh, 1200 uh, easily ran this mini split heat pump. Can the Egrotech Sonic 1200 power all the yellow cord a microwave three two one it's running it 1600 watts almost 1700 right now coming out of the power station oh the microwave is like dying So lowered the voltage, does not sound happy. So it ran it, and it ran it for the first couple of seconds at uh, full power, and then it shifted its voltage down. I really don't like that. It really should just cut out on overload, then try to lower the voltage and uh, potentially ruin uh, electronics. So I'm gonna say no on that, uh, just because there's no way to disable it automatically lowering the voltage, and I think that's very risky and dangerous for your electronic devices. In the Agritech Sonic 1200, power a full-size gas furnace. Powering this furnace uh, via this easy generator transfer switch, highly recommend uh, this unit uh, if you've got any kind of critical 120 volt appliances like this that uh, are hardwired that uh, you need to be able to you know, plug an extension cord into and power during a grid down situation. I'll leave a link uh, down below for the video of when I installed this uh, unit, so you can check that out. There's the hot surface igniter. That's pulling just over 120 to about 120 watts. All right, now the fan is fully up to speed. And you can see we're pulling just over 400 watts. If this was fully charged, uh, you'd be able to get a little over two hours of runtime off this power station. Can the Agritech Sonic 1200 power a high-end gaming desktop? We've got three 4K monitors. We've got a gaming benchmark running in full 4K on that one. And as you can see, the uh, Sonic 1200 is powering it no problem. We've got uh, just under 600 watts getting pulled. You can see that there's uh, nothing plugged into the outlet back there. So on a full charge, a super power hungry PC like this would be able to run on this uh, power station for just under an hour of time. Now that's assuming that uh, I'm pushing it to its limit uh, with you know, something intense like uh, this game. If I'm just doing uh, normal work stuff, what have you, obviously my power consumption is going to be lower and my runtime longer. Found an interesting uh, issue with this uh, Egritech Sonic 1200. If I turn this inverter on, I went to charge the power station at the same time. So you plug this in and watch, the inverter shuts off. You cannot charge this from AC wall power at the same time that uh, you're trying to discharge from the outlets. So it does not have pass through charging, which is kind of a bummer. 2024, most uh, power stations have been able to do that for a number of years. I know what's happening inside. They're using the inverter basically in reverse to charge the battery, which is a fantastic design because you don't need any kind of power brick. You can get really good charge rates. Super easy to just put a little relay in there that just passes power from the wall through to the outlet so that way they still stay on and enabled even while you're charging from the wall. Uh, USB outputs, 
and the DC output work fine. Let's test the recharge time. Now if we look at uh, the claims from Egritech, they claim it will reach 80% in one hour and fully charge to 100% in 1.6 hours. So let's see if those claims are true. Starting in at about uh, 700 watts, uh, we should see this climb up to about 800. And then uh, based on other behavior I've seen, it uh, tapers off towards uh, the end and uh, slowly ramps down all the way to the 100% mark. Coming up on the hour mark right now. And we are 77%, so close to 80, but uh, not quite, just 3% uh, off. I missed it uh, changing to 100 by a few seconds. We can see an hour and 30 minutes, 59 seconds by the time I stopped it. Anyway, six minutes ahead of the claimed time. We were within three percentage points of hitting the 80% mark and uh, this beat it uh, by uh, six minutes. I'm gonna go ahead and give it a point for matching the manufacturer's claims on recharge times. How does this rank? Well, as you can see here, for the price, it did a very good job. There are certainly some issues that need to be resolved to make it better in my mind. But uh, with those changes, I'm sure uh, price would increase uh, a bit. Anyway, be sure and check out my full spreadsheet where you can see how this compares to every other power station I've tested on this channel. It's very helpful to see how they stack up for any of your particular needs. This concludes the testing on this power station. First, the things that I like, the nice handle, to you know wireless charging high powered usb outlets nice light cool display does not have any kind of charging brick very simple very straightforward easy to use for how much power it packs it's very small and uh, very lightweight i personally would rather spend money on a lithium iron phosphate battery chemistry for a power station versus this this could be a good fit for you if uh, lightness and portability is the most important thing, and uh, you're not using it very frequently. Other gripes, there's no way to t change when the inverter turns off. It does not work well to run fridges. Even though it's capable of running a fridge, it does not work well for that. I do not like the fact that uh, it will uh, go over its rated output, and then after it's gone over its rated output for a period of time, it automatically turns the voltage down. I know there's other power stations that have that feature built in, but you have the ability to enable it or disable it. Pass through charging. That's kind of a bummer too. I would love to see it be able to support pass through charging. The other gripe that I have, and this, this one is small, but uh, the fact that uh, you can only do 200 watts of solar for a power station this size, I really think it needs to be 500 watts. Again, we're in 2024. Uh, all the power stations that are this size uh, support, you know, 500 watts, at least 400 watts, uh, but most of them 500 watts minimum and uh, can go up from there, uh, allowing us to maximize the solar input and uh, recharge this, you know, in, in a matter of like two hours instead of five right? Because rarely do you get five hours of ideal sun. But these are just my thoughts and opinions. So sound off down in the comments what you guys think. You guys are all so smart and uh, have fantastic ideas and thoughts to contribute. And I love hearing from you. So please leave a comment. Please give us a like and a subscribe if you appreciate uh, these kinds of real world tests and real world opinions. We'll catch you all next time.